Oh my god. You're lighting candles and I'm eating carrots. Yeah. Uh -huh. This is how we roll. All right. This is burnt wood. You know. Yeah. That's right. All right. Thank you. That's it. So far, this is the best interview I've ever done. Yeah, it's a, we're off to a good start. Welcome to Underground Arts in Philadelphia, where tonight Sandra Lurke will be here eating carrots, playing some rock and roll music. But first, he sits down and talks with us. Hello, sir. How are you? How are you? Can I catch you with a mouthful of carrots? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rookie mistake. I've never done it with a vegetable plate before. Well, we ask for a vegetable plate everywhere we play um, because uh, if you get, you know, if you get what you really want every day, it's not good for you. So a vegetable plate is what we should be eating. <laughs> so really, every day. so your your big rock and roll rider is an exercise in constraint. Is that what you're saying? Well, you just find, you know, I'm I like candy and potato chips and chocolate and. But if you ask for it, it sort of, they will give it to you. And it sort of loses its effect in a way. Because you, if you get the same thing every day, of anything really, I think you, you just lose, it, it loses value. Let me ask you, because you've been doing this a long time. Yeah. Just put out your 437th album this week. That's right. We'll get to that in a minute. Right. Um, how has that kind of stuff changed since when you first started doing this to what it is now? I mean... Was it vegetable plates when you were 18 and doing this? I imagine that's a little bit different. Well, yeah, I, I, in the beginning, I didn't really understand the big deal with like hospitality stuff. Or, you know, they, I would get questions, do you want this, do you want that? I, I really didn't have any answers. I really, because it was strange to me that I would know what I would want a month ahead or if I would know, I didn't really know much about anything. Um, and I didn't, when I was 18 and, and started, you know, for a moment was, was, a sort of a pop, pop star or whatever. It was, I, I was very strict and very, I didn't drink alcohol. I didn't do anything. Oh, really? Yeah. So I didn't really, I really didn't indulge even in vegetable plates. You know, <laughs> I, I did nothing. I just wanted to plug in my guitar and, and play and, and get the fuck out of there. And that, that was it. And eventually you were like... I'll let myself have some cauliflower. Fine, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I earned, I earned a little, this. A little bit of broccoli, but I'll tell you what I do have. If you want some. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah let's do that. Let's, let's live a little. Let's absolutely do that. Yeah. You do that. I'm going to grab a cucumber here. Mm -hmm. New album came out this week, right? Yeah, yeah, On yeah. Tuesday. Yeah. Um, and it's... What number is it really? Because it's not 437. It's, it's 7 not. or 8 or... Yeah, I guess it's seven among my studio albums, and then I've done some other, you know, projects, soundtracks, and I did a live record a couple of years ago. So I've done ten records of music that I've made. Does that feel different? What does that feel like? Uh, is this week exciting? Is it is it great to get that out there finally? What's the emotions on it? Yeah, it, it's wonderful. I uh, you need uh, most of the work I do. It's very selfish. It's about making something that I'm so excited about and so motivated to share that I will do almost anything to 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 get it out there. And I can. I, I usually have this uh, mantra, whatever you call it, like you have to. I have to come up with something that I think is so exciting that potentially I would be fine with the world completely rejecting it you know you have to muster that kind of motivation you're from norway so you know more about norway than anyone else i know really um yeah. what's what's one thing i can take with me that i can drop in like a conversation and I go, hey he knows a little bit about norway <laughs> what's like what's something i could say about norway it, it would have to be something that starts a conversation then right if you're gonna drop well, it, let me tell you this. Started. Here's what I know about Norway right now. Yeah, what level are you? At? Is that there's there's just Vikings everywhere, and you're always in some kind of boat, and you go underneath a waterfall. Now, granted, I learned it all from that ride at Epcot Center. 
Okay. Well, <laughs> so I figured maybe you could enlighten me. Yeah, yeah. There's there's room for for improvement here. The Vikings um, only come out after midnight on Fridays and Saturdays okay. in, the, in the major cities, and they come out in the form of uh, of uh, of really really drunk, crazy crazy people who have sort of held back all their. Uh, their anger and their all their desires and, and 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 sort of kept it to themselves the whole world. So the way to become a Viking is you just kind of drink a lot and then go, I'm a Viking. Yeah, and you just you just <laughs> plunder through the the city That's uh, right, on a Friday night. Well, have you ever pillaged or plundered? Um, uh, not well. Maybe lately, I guess, but through dance, of course. Yeah, sure. Yeah, through dance. Sure. But somebody once labeled me the Velvet Viking, and I didn't like it at first, but I've, it's grown on me, and, and, uh, and I, now I sort of live by that. I, yeah, I can be the Velvet Viking. You live by the, yeah. live by the creed of the Velvet Viking. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Velvet Viking. Um, yeah, you can call me. Yeah, no, I will. Um, Velvet Viking, thank you so much for sharing your, your vegetables and your oh, Prosecco. There's, and There's plenty to yeah. If you want to take some home. I think we should just end the interview and then just eat. Yeah, yeah. Let's do that. Yeah, please. Thanks, man. Oh, no problem. The Velvet Viking. Yeah, the Velvet Viking.